Welcome to the first 2v2 game after a very long time on the map Central Italy and it's not symmetrical but it's very unique and most of the games played on this map are also quite fun and entertaining. And of course it's gonna be a great matchup between Rohan and Rohan versus Gondor and Isengard. So it's a, a kinda difficult matchup for the double Rohan side of course as expected but that's what makes it so entertaining because it's a quick match you can't dodge and you need to play the matchup you get and when you get forced out of your comfort zone great stuff can happen double furnace opening that's an opening I would not recommend against double good usually you want to go for the Uruk pit just to have a bit more early game presence to deal with the peasants and you can even pressure your enemy farms and for that you need definitely the Uruk pit opening because they will group all of the peasants together and push to the Isengard who is capturing now the settlement in the front yes this settlement over there and that's the good thing about the evil factions on this map because your settlement behind your base is super difficult to reach for your opponent there comes the big warchan combination the teamwork is coming in clutch because Gondor player was sending one of the soldiers forward to defend his ally and it looks like the peasants they of course don't stand a chance in a 2v4 situation because the war chant is basically like having another unit you know 50 percent more damage 50 percent more armor it's super super effective and of course rohan has the chance to get a lot of extra peasants upon the field to pressure the map but all of that will kind of you know uh, delay or stable a bit and your game will be slower progressing. Come people. No damage dealt to Isengard. That's amazing. Level 2 soldier. Almost level 3 soldier. He's gonna hit like a truck. Does Condor still have heal? Yes, he does. So you can kill up all these units back to full HP. The Hobbit taunts and agents. Mirror of Brandybuck will be barely able to get away. And again, you know, two Lumber Mills will give you also the the wood bonus look at the isengard base after a few minutes into the game there's already five furnaces and a uruk pit who almost which almost got level two just at the same time before the first rohirrim coming out of the field out on the field and it's going to be a double stable technology so i believe this Rohan player was spamming lots of additional peasants and uh, yet he wasn't able to deal any damage to his opponent never mind i lied he destroyed one of the settlements over there the gonna player going for the faramir actually you know faramir doesn't want to go for the horses that's also a mistake in my opinion you need when you play with um good and your ally is evil especially isengard you need to go for the horses at the beginning of the game they need you need them to get the map control to pressure your opponent otherwise you will be the one who's going to be pressured and you need to be continuously defending yourself and your opponents will basically get money for free because his settlements their settlements will never be destroyed. I think he forgot about the settlement totally with the peasant. He's sleeping on it. If Rohirrim level uh, 2, he was able to kill the level 3 soldier. And the settlement in the front has been captured. One peasant was able to sneak through to the settlement. And this Lambert Mill is going to go down for the first time in this game. And now we have an Isengard army. Look, that's also a mistake. Early, you, need, you don't need this early on. You know, you want to go for Lourdes. You want to go for the, for the lead game. Power. Because Lourdes, when your ally is Gondor, is the only continuously reliable damage leadership you will have. Because Warchant won't last forever. And your ally is Gondor, not Rohan, who can't just put Theory next to your combos. He needs to also get Boromir, get him level up. So for that reason, Lourdes is always a great choice. Even though this Gondor went actually for Boromir. So I'm assuming he wanna play the sportive version. As Boromir is taking the creep in the middle. So taking the full creep here will give Boromir to the level, the level 4. And Faramir is going to be also getting the last hit. Getting level 4, 5 already. You know, that's amazing. So it will be armor leadership from Faramir. 40% more armor and resistances to fear. Which doesn't really do too much against Rohan. Because the only fears or stuns Rohan can have is Aragorn's LN deal. And the Cloudbreak. Cloudbreak is going to be a long time. You know, until then, we have also Saruman, who will give you resistance to fear or Ganov. And, of course, the Elaine deal isn't gonna happen anytime soon either, you know? Against Mordor, it can be good, though. Against Mordor, it can be good. Against Gondor, it can be good, because Boromir's Horn of Gondor is gonna be quite annoying to play against. 
Übrigens, Rohan not that much needed. So Irma has been recruited. Uh, Rohan player. This one, he's playing for the for the lead game. Starkiller. Irma level 4 is gonna add a lot of value to the table. And this Rohan also going for Irma. So it's gonna be double Irma technology. Something I haven't seen before. It's going for an early archer range level 2. And wanna get also early Rohirrim Archer, which by the way are extremely weak against Faramir. So until you are ready to go, you can't fight. But when you are ready to go, when your Eoma is level 4, and that's the downside of not having horses for Gondor, because this creep can be just taken slowly but surely from the Gondor player, and he can easily, slowly but surely, level up all his heroes to level 4. Level 2, and almost level 4 Theoden already. That means very soon, we will see a glorious charge from the king. And again... Play it slow, your map is safe, you, you can't lose your farms, and Gondor and Aizen are playing it super defensively, they don't want to feed power points, but they have also nothing to take from the map anymore, they have actually no more creeps on the map, uh, centered at Tyrion, and uh, the fact that Theoden is so close to level 4 is a very crazy, but also scary thing for Aizen. GC gives you 75% armor, and 20% more damage, so it's super powerful. However, the warning arrow from Faramir is hurting the king a lot. Half of his HP is gone, and you want to avoid him. You want to avoid him, and also, most importantly, you want to avoid Lurz. So Fire Rose is a good damage boost, makes you kill structures faster, but it doesn't add any defensive capabilities to the Rohirrim Archer army, which are, once again, super big against Faramir. Faramir can two-shot them easily. Outpost control, watch Faramir. Actually, one shotting them, never mind, two shotting them. And uh, Boromir also almost level six. That's amazing because level seven will unlock the Fort Gondor, which also affects the archers from the ally Isengard player. And again, Armory has been built way too early. It's been on the spot now for over two minutes. And that's something you don't want to do. You want to destroy it as soon as possible. It just blocks a spot in your castle, it doesn't give you any money. So when you build the armory, get all the upgrades as soon as possible and demolish it right off the bat, you know? So this guy has normal Rohirrim and also Rohirrim Archer, going also for the Archer range. So they are pretty much doing the same thing. What could be done is, of course, outpost control like he did. Build three farms here, you don't need, or a well and two farms, you don't need a statue here because there is not going to be a fight anytime soon. Oh, look the farm here, fishing, boom! Uh, Faramir has to be annoying to play against until you get shields and heavy armor, then he won't do too much uh, to you. And most people sleeping on Rohan, but Rohan is not weak. When you have double Rohan, you have the chance to get double GC. You can get double Legolas. You know, Legolas, some levels on him. Smart move there. Putting Eoma next to Legolas as he's killing some units. And, you know, getting Lego to level 5, 6, 7 ish will make him to a hero killing machine he can kill Farah, Boro, Lourdes and also Saruman extremely fast and double Eoma means double spear throw you know you will have lots of damage against high valuable targets like Farah, like Boro, like Saruman and later on also like Gandalf because I'm assuming that's gonna be the plan from the Skandar he already went for Gandalf and he has also the power points for him so he has to be somewhere around uh, Faramir is doing map control, that's gonna take him ages to destroy one of the farms. That's the downside of not having any units on the field. Uh, Boromir leadership, Lourdes only level 1, still needs 4 levels. Um, and there comes... Gandalf. And it looks like Aizen is prepared to go for a, for a big, big push. He has 4 combos in total, right? And Trohan seems not to be ready yet. He has no heavy armor yet. Does this person have heavy armor? The Answer is no, but he will get it very, very soon. Oh, nice. He missed it. But be careful with Legolas there. Legolas might go down. Oh, he's going to e-study him. Oof, be careful. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk. Oh my god, what a cripple. Oh, what is Gandalf doing? Oh my god. Does, did he have heal? Ah, he had heal. Okay, never mind. So you want to get the last hit to get experience. Legolas died, unfortunately. That's a lot of money you need to now reinvest into reviving your hero, who was level 2. 
In level 2, of course, you don't deal that much damage at this point. So, what you want to do with Legolas is you want to play around the cooldowns, you know? You want to get uh, the Hulk Strike ready, you move up, use it, back off. You don't want to sit there and auto-attack unless it's a big fight and your opponent loses the focus to target him, then it's fine. But when you want to go for the small treat, you want to play around the cooldown of your Hulk Strike. So, I mean, of course, as expected, uh, Gondor will have no map control with no units. He's going for the uh, uh, combos too, just like his opponent, uh, just like his ally, I mean. So double combos. I don't know about that one, actually. You don't need that much firepower. You have already the support to your allies' combos. Now it's debatable because in the late game, your knights can't fight against the Rohirrim army, but they can still run and deal damage and deny this level 3 farms to exist and make your opponent rich because at this point Rohan could just buy Grand Harvest on this farm and nothing would happen. This farm would glow like crazy and produce so much money. This one single farm for the Rohan player at the top left. Armory, Isengard. Now they are very strong, don't get me wrong. I mean they are extremely strong. This army can't lose a fight. With Glorious Charge or not, it doesn't matter. He has Forge Bleeds on his uh, pikemen in the front with this much damage reduction with Borrow plus Warchant. The horses with Glorious Charge, if they ride into them, they will die in a second. And then you have also crazy armor leadership, right? You have uh, Farami leadership, you have Warchant and Gandalf. Ooh, son. Who's Theodin was that actually? It was the Theodin from the White. He was level 1. Okay, level 1, of course, you are weak. And where is the level 3 Theorina? I didn't see him for a long time. Uh, he's here. Okay, oh, level... I missed it. Oh my god, half of the beast has been taken now. Oh my god, I p didn't pay attention. Finish him. Oh, so close. Level 2, that's uh, so much money. Okay, this Rohan is doing a phenomenal job. Unfortunately, his Elma is still only level 3, but imagine if he gets level 4. That's going to be so much more damage. Raw damage power for this army. And of course, you see, the mobility advantage is crazy. Yes, the army, you can fight against that, but you don't need to fight against them because it's an open base. You can invade whenever you want to. And it kind of uh, prevents opponent to advance to your side of the map, you know, because they need to know whenever they try something like this, they might get big time punished for this because this army over there has definitely the chance to take down the whole castle in a minute. In a minute. So you can't ignore that. That's why you just like get some more tower guards. Maybe he went also for the industry on his allies, uh, Blacksmith, knowing that he doesn't have that much map control. This also has only one farm on it. So what's the solution to this problem? I will, I will explain you, you know. You don't want to leave pikemen in your base because pikemen will be shredded by the Rohir marches. What you want to do is you want to leave a couple of combos in your base. And then you basically leave two combos, have three combos, which is enough to push. And get Saruman with your army too. The Uruk pit. And in this situation, um, you, want, you want to select all your towers to attack Eoma. Not Theodim because he has glorious charge. You want to attack Eoma. Oof, he might die in a second. No ammo leadership, though. He's gonna use the bubble and to run in safety. But he also had to cancel the lightning sword, which is a long cooldown. Theorin is back on the many boys. Level 3 farms. But the green run player knows what he's doing, right? He's, he knows what he's doing. Playing the limits, you know. Only missing a level on his Eoma. And that's gonna change everything. But also, he's going now for Aragorn. That's another damage source. Does he have the power points for it? This player, by the way, is... This Rohan. Restore hope to men. And he has three power points. So he will potentially invest two of them into the Anduril. Without Anduril, Aragorn is going to be too weak in terms of armor. And also too slow in terms of speed. So you need to give him Anduril just like you need to give Ganath the white power point to Ganath the green. 
but this army is super strong. However, if you can't fight with a strong army, their uh, skill or their strength remains, you know, meaningless. It's a big map. So big map means you need mobile units, you know. So you want to bring the fight to them. You want to give Farah Boro to your ally, and your ally has to keep two combos in the base, wait for Saruman, and then you go. Like, you bring one or two trebuchet, it's totally fine. Like, you need to know this outpost is under control from the green Rohan player. It means when you go for the white Rohan player base to the castle of him, and you destroy the castle, you will play a 2v1 situation, you know what I mean? But again, all we are waiting for is a big Rohan force and Elma level 4. And we will have in total 70% damage from this man, 50% more damage from this man, and 40% more damage from this man, plus 20% more damage from the Glorious Charge. That's a lot of damage, and that will give you the chance to one-shot and melt through the enemy heroes like butter, you know? You can one-tap Ganoff in a second he's dead. You can one-tap Saruman, you can one-tap Legola, uh, uh, you know, Boromir, Faramir, Lurz. And each level will make the Rohir march also, oh, he's gonna miss it, way, way stronger. Now cut this way off here. This army has to move this way, and this army has to move this way. Now they will ride through this army, and the army will shred. You see, one of them has been already taken down, there comes the big... Big Easter Light from Ganov, but the commitment on the base from the green Rohan player with the normal Rohirrim warriors. He knows the base is open buffet. All you can eat, all you can, all you desire, you can eat all day long. You know, like a five stars vacation in Antalya, Turkey. You know what I mean? Hopefully not that expensive. By the way, guys, I wanted, I was in Turkey in vacation. And I wanted to go to Antalya, but you can't afford it. What the hell are these prices? Boom. What the hell are these prices, boys? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Both Eomars are level 3. Only one Theoden is level 4. Uh, Aragorn is going to be also recruited from this one player. Gondor is rotating now. And this army is pretty beefy to me as well. Level 5 combos. Super, super strong. 3 trebuchet, 4 trebuchet with firestone, they can break the part of the wall in a second. And in the worst case scenario, Aizen can use Warchan on his ally. But there comes the big glorious charge, who is gonna win this battle and how. The catapults are super exposed, big commitment, there comes the land, Warchan, focus on Gandalf. Ooh, they are riding through lots of lots of lots of tower guards. Gandalf is gonna run for his life, big focus, and Theodin can't be knocked down. But we'll go down, there comes the heal, Boromir is exposed, the combos, there comes the land, I don't know whose land this is, but it looks like it's the land from the Rohan players because the Gondor combos are not glowing anymore, there comes the beautiful blast, and the full commitment now on the combos again, the tower guards are not in position, it's the land of Rohan in which Gondor has no leadership, and he also lost his Faramir and Boromir, it means Gondor combos will be cleaned, there comes the lightning sword, and he will be able to catch up one of the couple of the Rohirrim archers, Theoden is gonna be able to survive. There comes Legolas, who could have finished potentially this dude. But he's gonna go for a beautiful Hulk Strike on the Tower Guards. And that's gonna be a big double. I don't know what have been what Isengard has been doing all this during all this fight. He used the war chant, but I didn't see Isengard army anywhere. He didn't go for the outpost either. So I would understand if you go for the outpost or try to take something out of the situation while his ally is getting to be want. But I think Aizen was way too scared. Way too scared. Fireball has been used. The comes the spear throw and big cut. All the wizards falling. We have even Gimli upon the field. Super underrated hero. He has been only getting receiving buffs in 2.22. Uh, his price got reduced. Ooh, son! What a juicing hit! If even Elven Warriors, all this faction has to offer. Legolas! That's not worth it, bro. That's totally not worth it. Imagine if Gimli could get the experience there. If he gets level 5, it's over for you. You can cripple him. 
Give me this faster now, though. I mean, basically, the changes he received in 2.2 are he, he, he's faster now. So he's faster than normal infantry units, like, for example, soldier, orc, or peasants. He's not as fast as Lourdes, though. Um, they will kind of be busted because then Lourdes can cripple him and who's going to kill him. Um, and he is cheaper. His Slayer is available with level 5. And his level 2 also gives resistances to fear. That's something new. Gimli is going to go down. There is no ch ch chance he can be saved. And this trebuchet are going to feed a lot of power points and getting this Irma to level 4. That was the experience he needed. Gondor not demolishing the structures in time at least and feeding lots of power points to Rohan. So we have after the first couple of fiesta minutes into the game, not couple of, it's been like over 10 minutes I'm assuming, we have um, in total almost 5 power points for the wizard. So after the cloud break, so he actually got surprisingly far with the power points against his opponents. I believe the tower guards trample and the countless amount of Rohirrim killed were giving him so many power points there, you know? And we have Harley Quinn, that's the green Rohan at the top left. He has in total four power points collected after the end summon. Isengard, um, not even land yet, uh, arena yet, because he has not been continuously contributing to the fight. Maybe he's too scared of a potential uh, beast rush. And last but not least, the Rohan at the top right, Starkilla, has uh, zero power points after the draft heal the Andril Sword and the Alvin Wood. Fight for Rohan. And we fight for Rohan. So now we have triple leadership for this army with Aragorn being around them. Aragorn has been killed before. All of these heroes have been killed. So they will have to be revived. That's potentially why Gondor got so many power points from the big battle. Aragorn is here though. Um, but what I'm missing in this game is the teamwork between Gondor and Aizen. The teamwork I have been seeing at the beginning of the game by the Gondor player sending help to his ally. I have not been able to see the teamwork after that one, especially not from the Isengard side. He's way too scared. There comes the Cloud Break. Land is a horrible choice here from Aizen. You don't want to use land out of no reason. You need to expect the enemy to have the land to cover yours. And your land can be used later on against you. He crippled Theorin, that's good. But he crippled the one who... Boromir can be killed. Theorin is killed. Level 6. And now they will focus just down... Ooh, Eoma. That's a big kill if Eoma dies. Eoma got killed. There comes the end summon though, on the Gondor base. The ends are dealing hella damage. And they have actually, when you summon the ends, they have like long time remaining. So they stay on the field for almost two minutes, you know? So if you ignore them, they will take down your whole base. But there is a Gandalf who will put them all on fire. And they will all die. Just blast them. When they burn and die, Gandalf will get power points too. Look, he's gonna go down. You see, Gandalf is getting experience. Of course, from level 9 to level 10, you need more experience. But he's invading the base now. He has highly leveled Rohirrim warriors going inside the jeans. Isengard is trying to rotate to this location. Lourdes is running it down. What is Lourdes planning to do? The answer is absolutely nothing. The elves have been stolen. And you want to focus down the heroes. Theodin and Eowyn are your target. There comes the heal, and now Eowyn could get Easterit, or even... Nah, Theodin is full HP. Nah, he's gonna overkill. I mean, actually very close to the War of Power. That, of course, is super, super important. Level 7. Saruman, level 9, by the way, uh, enables the Thunderbolt, which we haven't seen yet in an actual live game. I mean, Loki is not the easiest thing to do to get Saruman to level 9. Because unlike uh, Ganoff... Ooh, son! What a juice! Uh, now, history? Uh, he has no history. Be careful. But Eowyn... Is Eowyn gonna be evil? Never mind. In the meantime, we have a fight here. Uh, Aragorn and Gimli. Gimli is almost level 3. That's good. Leap attack will be available. Legolas almost level 4. That's even better. Gondor has to repair this, otherwise his base is going to be invaded over and over again. All heroes from Gondor are remaining, and 
they just don't want to push. He has even level 5 combos over there, but he's not using them very well. Sorry, man. Your stuff is broken. I mean, it's a huge army, and uh, they are the ones who are attacking, who are creating opportunities and uh, momentums, you know? And the other team is just reacting. That's all what the other team is doing. And with defending all alone, you can't win the game. So you need to put pressure, ideally together, you know? Like Gondor should have not been going alone there, knowing that it's gonna turn easily into a 2v1 situation when your ally is off position. So you want, the only reason you want to do this is if your ally is putting pressure on the on this base with his ballista, which was definitely not the case. And those mistakes can, you know, give lots of power points, which can lead, again, that's a very mistake of a land. Saruman is running it down. Beautiful fireball, getting lots of experience. Land will be immediately covered. Um, Deja Vu. Ganaf is getting... The chance, boom! Uh, but they didn't die, they have too much leadership at this point. The trebuchet expansions on the top of the wall, the Firestone, which he purchased from the Siege Works or Workshop, it's called. We have even Alvin Warriors, Gimli, level 2. We have even Mariotok Brandybok. There comes the Cloud Break. Uh, Ganav is getting damaged big time. Legolas is hurting him. Ooh, bubble. Full commitment, I don't know what's going on, but Gondor got now finally the power points for his EOD. Even more than that, lots of stuff getting killed over there, but Rohan will fish some power points in exchange. There comes the For Gondor ability, that's the new animation by the way from For Gondor. If have heard Gimli dying, and level 8 will also unlock the glory of Gondor, which gives Gondor the chance to get, collect, uh, to get resources on kills. Aizen is rotating for the first time, but it looks like he lost his heroes. He didn't lose Saruman, though. He lost, I believe... Nah, Lourdes is also alive, somewhere. Aizen is... Uh, what you want to do with Aizen, and that's the one of the best advantages of having good evil combination in 2v2 matches, or team games generally, you can put your damage units like this to your allies well. And they will regenerate back to full HP, full size, in few seconds, you know? So that's the advantage. That's why evil, good combination, pretty much the best combination you can have. So this Rohan has not many power points collected, nor does Isengard. Uh, he actually has power points collected, never mind. He has 10 power points. The evil factions or Eisen will also get power points from losing stuff. And his army can't lose. Like this army will crush this army seven days of the week. Just use Rain, Warchant, go. You have triple leadership with this army all alone, without the Borrow, Gandalf, or Faramir from your ally, no? Just put, use Rain, and then you basically go. But he's going for the Rams. I like that one, actually. I like it, I like it, I like it. Bring the fight to your opponent. And this player has no outpost, so the outpost is under control from the green. So if the White Rohan loses the castle, it's gonna be a 2v1 situation. Let's see if that's gonna be the case. The Rohan battle towers can be attacked by arrows. And one part of the wall broken, two parts of the wall broken, three parts of the wall broken, and now it's time to go in. You wanna go in and use the rain as you go in. Oh, there comes the war of power. Not war of power. Oh my god, everything is falling in a second. Uh, and yes, even war of power. Saruman and Starkiller has been already defeated. Now, again, like I said, he left before he got defeated. It means his money and his remaining army, which was not there, will be transferred to his ally, you know? And that, that's why he has now 400 command points instead of 200. But he lost Theodine, he lost everything. Can he get the three power points he's missing to his EOD? And if yes, can this change, by all means, the direction of this game? Ooh, he got actually almost a power point from the battle, from the leap, and almost a full level. That's also a combination you can do. You know, the combination you can do is like blast, land, right? So you deny leadership from your opponent, you blast, that means it will hit very hard. 
I like the animation from the Forgondor, though. Look at this animation. Looks sexy, doesn't it? The combos overall are strong in an all-out fight than horses. And they have leadership. But they lack the mobility. And this player played, for me, the personally the best, Harley Quinn. And this player didn't add too much assistance to his ally. You know, basically keep rushing the beast over and over again. Yanaf is good jump. Darkness is closing in on me. Boro is level eight. He went for the all the power points from the spell book, knowing that he can't get that he can't get to EOD. And what a brave man, fighting until the end. But you know, infantry, you see? You just camp, you get strong. You can't lose. Double infantry technology. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this 2v2 game. It's been a very long time. Usually we focus around the 1v1 games. But there are some people who use to play 2v2 games every day. Because they prefer the 2v2 mode instead. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more team games cast on this channel. Or if you prefer to see more 1v1s on this channel. And take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always... Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.